Hello, I decided to record a video for you because I think it will be easier just to show you and to spend 5-10 uh, minutes on show and then trying to describe uh, it by text and e in an email. So here on our main page, you just enter the domain name into this uh, field and two very important buttons appear here. You can click those and it, they will open uh, in new tab uh, web archive. This one will open the calendar for the main page and this one will open will open the table with all URL crawled by the archive. What's important to understand here is that this calendar is not related to the whole website. So for example, this one is not the website version. Uh, this is not even the page version. This table or this calendar, sorry, this calendar is only the calendar of particular URL that we are looking at this one, when it was saved. And all URLs, all unique URLs on this website have their own calendar. So each image has its own calendar. And if you open the, if you type in here another URL, for example, for an image, you will see when this image was for the first time when it was scrolled for the last time. And if it was scrolled uh, and saved multiple times, you will see all uh, crawled uh, timestamps and versions. Because in your email, you also assumed for, um, let me just copy that from another window. Okay, for this one. You assumed that uh, when you tried to open it from 2009, it redirected to 2010. Let me just show you the calendar. There was never ever uh, a version from 2009. The first time when WebArchive crawled uh, that image, it was in 2010. It redirects you not because there is a new version. It redirects you because there is no version from 2009. And uh, to show you that so you can understand, I will open the version that you wanted to save. This one from March 1st, 2009. I will open a network tab. Uh, so I press F12 for Control shift i Command shift i on my computer. Uh, make sure that you do not have persist logs uh, turned on. Uh, I also recommend you to disable cache. And now I click refresh. It will show all URLs that are being loaded with this page. And uh, I will also need to filter out only URLs related to this website. So here in the filter uh, field, I can just enter some part of the URL uh, of the domain. So like serious. Okay, that's good. So when you open this page, all other elements uh, that are being loaded with this page, they are called with the same timestamp because WebArchive does not know uh, what, the, what timestamps uh, to load from. But since there is no, um, but since there is no uh, images, for example, with the same timestamp, they are redirected. So you can see that, for example, this this is some image, and it gets redirected location to the new correct timestamp, 2011, as you can see here. So it it uh, tries to download from the same timestamp, but that's not how uh, crawler works because when the crawler got to this page for the first time, it saved at this. At this is only the time when HTML code of this page was saved, only HTML code, nothing else. And after that, it parsed this HTML code and it found out that there are other images. For example, uh, let me show you this one. And it's only after that, maybe a few seconds later, maybe minutes, maybe even months, it downloaded this image. But you see it here, uh, this image, it tries in HTML code, it tries to, it, it just set, sets the same timestamp as you uh, as you would as you look at the page, but there is no image here, so that's why it will redirect to the correct uh, timestamp. So vine vicious. Okay, let me go back here. Vine vicious. Okay, this was uh, the first uh, request. Then it redirects to the correct URL, and this URL is this one. So if you open again it in a new tab, this is the URL, the, the image, the final image. And if you look at the calendar of this image, 
for the first time it was scrolled and for, for the first time and for the only time it was scrolled only in in on December 21st 2010 so there is no way that this image can be included in your store since you just limited uh, two timestamp as uh, this uh, two time as this with this timestamp and i also do not recommend you to enter this uh, timestamp with seconds because those are not related to the website. Those are related to this particular HTML only. So with this timestamp, with this time, you just cut out a huge amount of uh, data that were crawled after that. And by that, I also mean a lot of internal pages. So And you buy expired domains because of uh, the content and the backlinks and, uh, and those pages. So uh, there, is, there is no point in uh, limiting yourself with this timestamp. That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, when you see it, when you look at this calendar, you see that this website uh, had uh, has uh, more than 8,000 unique URLs scrolled by WebArchive. And with your timestamp, you've restored only about 900, less than 1,000. So you really cut out a huge amount of data, a huge amount of content with uh, this timestamp. So that's why you never, you never ever set a timestamp uh, that is uh, this uh, precise with seconds. You need to make it short, for example, at least like, like this one, or maybe uh, just a year, but again, let me just open the calendar and explain. So let me open, for example, something at the end of 2011. Okay, let me also open something from the last one. Again and again, we are looking only at the main page. Even if you select uh, this version, there there may be some internal images or some internal pages that were crawled here, and they are in the same design version that you need. I understand that you want. Let me open this one, 2013. I understand that you want this uh, design web design version. Okay, so as you can see, in December 2011, the website was still working, it was scrolled, uh, images are there, so why not at least take this one, 2011, why to cut out uh, so many pages and to select 2009? Because this, this version looks good. And uh, if you look at 2012, there was still a working version, Yes, some images are not there, but this is not a problem. Um, it's better to get the most uh, content from the website. And uh, with those images, you can fix the main page later. I will explain how. So I can see that in two th at, at the end of 2012, for example, for, this, for the main page, the website was still working. And uh, in 2013, the website was not working. Okay. It was working, but it's not the version that you want. Okay, so that's good. So at least we know that we want something like uh, this, 2012-10. So I would set like 2012-10. But also let me check um, this version. I Again, I open the network tab. I filter out all the URLs that are related to this page. I refresh this page so that uh, it will load all URLs here. Okay, you can see that some images uh, 2012-10 were not there. They respond uh, with 404. Okay, good. Well, not so good, but it's not a huge problem. Let me open the July version and see how it worked. Oh, sorry, that's 2013. Okay, let me go back one year. Okay, so I check this version. Let's check the June version. The website was still there. Uh, so what I would do here is that, let me go back to this one. It's 2012. Let me open the, the last version. I will also uh, open the network tab. I will refresh the page so I'll see all URLs. And here in I will enter Sirius 2013. Okay, tried to load some images from 2013, but they responded with 404 uh, uh, 
st status code. Okay, so here the those images were not there anymore. Let me open 2012, and here is the October. Okay, good. December, November, October, 09. Okay, so what I would do here is that I would restore this website with the 2012-10, like this one. Do not enter any seconds and uh, like time because it's it, it makes no sense. You do not know when was the last URL uh, was scrolled from this version. Actually, you, you can you can check when it was scrolled by using this table. So if you sort this table by the from column descending, so from new to old ones, you have all URLs that were crawled by this website and they are, so for example, this uh, JavaScript, for the first time it was scrolled, it was saved in June 15, 2019. So this URL was never found and crawled by the archive before that date. And as you can see, there's also from and to. So some URLs may have different dates. That means that they were crawled several times. For example, here, this URL, this JavaScript was first crawled on, on February. And then it was crawled a few times more. And the last time it was crawled on March 2019. And if you look, if this tool is not that, like, it's not perfect because it's not very convenient to use. So when if I need to go to, I need to go somewhere here to 2000, uh, let me go back to 2012. Okay, so let me just scroll it back. This will take some time. We are also working on our own tool that will be more convenient than this one that uh, WebRchive uh, offers. Because it's, it's, it's so inconvenient. But again, maybe on this website, because uh, you, need to, you need to go back so many pages just to get this version from uh, 2012. 12, but in, in most cases you do not need to go that back because you only need to understand when like you have here like 2012, a few pages from uh, maybe at the end of 2019, and then you can see a huge gap between the, those dates and you, you will see something like from March 2019 and it will be a work, working version of the website. And again, do not look only at the main page, look at also another URLs like images and internal pages. So for example, here is the calendar of those internal pages. And let me go back a few pages more. Uh, it also has, those are not only um, pages that return 200 OK code, but they there are also 301 and 302 redirects. So you also need to understand that. So for example, if I open this one on July 2012, let me open the first version here, 2012. It will then uh, redirect to 2007, 22. Okay, so nothing very important here. Let me go back. Let me find something working here. So for example, image in January 2012, the images were still working there. Here, the image in July, the image, let, let me check this image, for example. 2012, the first one, it, it's, it's the only one. Okay, so this looks good from the website and it was in uh, July. So some images were still uh, crawled and saved in July. So maybe it's better to set two timestamp not as October, but something as uh, July, like this one. Uh, with this uh, two timestamp, with this two time limit, you will have the most URLs from this website, from this design. So you will cut out the design that you do not want. And uh, if you if the website will look not as you expect it to look, that's not a problem. So you will restore the, this website and let me go back to the calendar. I will explain another thing to do. Okay, so here 
we decided that we will take this as end of July 2012. Okay, sorry, I had a phone call. Okay, so I'm back. So uh, that's why you need to restore, you will restore the most URLs that were ever crawled from this website and our system restores only URLs that responded with the code 200 OK. So it will not restore 404 pages. So you do not have to worry about that. And then if you if you want to change the main page, okay, that's not a problem. So for example, you really like uh, this main page from here. Okay, so first you do the restore with those settings. You enter the domain name, you will enter the two timestamp as this one. Usually it takes like a minute or two to select correct two timestamp, but in this case, it has a lot of new content that was scrolled after uh, that version that you need. So that's why I needed to scroll down, scroll back so, so much. But if you want, let me open the calendar. If you want this version as the main page, that's not a problem. So you restore this, this one first, and then you do another restore with only this timestamp between this particular second and this particular second. The time between the time range is one second only. And uh, how many files do you think WebArchive crawled between this time, within this second? In 99%, only one. So this will restore only HTML code of the main page, nothing else. And then using our CMS, you can actually import this restore in our CMS and replace the main page. I will, um, I think I will pause this video again and, uh, and I will show how to do this. Okay, so here I will open. I uploaded your store to our test server. So here it is as it is. And if you created a new restore with only a single page, you just go to tools import tool and you enter the serial number of your store. The serial number is the one that you've got in email. It has uh, dashes or without dashes, that doesn't matter. You click download. And here uh, I just entered the serial number of uh, the same restore, but it will, it will be a new serial number. You will see only containing one file and it will be HTML code for the main page. You will import that file with the um, with this option, overwrite all URLs. So it will do that all uh, content that is here in this restore will move and overwrite to this existing restore. So that's why first you restore it as two thousand twelve oh seven. I think we decided, and then the next restore you will only restore the HTML code of the main page and you do not have to do anything manually to change in the files. You will just stay within our CMS and you will just import that, replace that and it will replace it. So you will have the maximum, you, the maximum content possible for this domain and at the same time you will have this as your main page. So uh, that's, that's how to fix this problem with the main page. Okay, so uh, this video took more time than I expected. So I hope that it is helpful for you so you understand now how WebArchive works because that was the main problem. You did not understand what those, uh, what those numbers mean. And now I hope you do. So thank you for your attention. Have a good day.